Hey folks, how are you? I'm out in the forest with Tripper today. We're going to spend a few hours out here just messing around. I got a really, really cool gift that I wanted to show off. It deserves being shown off. Um, this is a vintage plum axe that has been restored to a pristine condition. A new handle put on it, a new style handle, and obviously some leather work done and even some more. Dear Joe, I've been a subscriber and fan of your channel for years. I greatly enjoy the Wilderness Canoe Adventures. They're my favorite. A mutual friend told me that you really like vintage American axes, so I decided to put one together that I believe would best suit your needs. It is a one and three quarter pound vintage plum national head that I reconditioned and applied a 20 degree convex grind. The handle is of my own style and design. 21 inch ash that is thin and flexible like the handles of the old days, but with a large flared palm swell reminiscent of those used on racing axes. The large swell acts like a rudder for the axe, guiding it and keeping the handle from rotating in your grip while the slim profile of the handle reduces shock and fatigue. The proud hang is topped off with a cherry wedge. I hope this axe will serve you well and be a faithful companion in your adventures. Your friend Matt at Beaver Creek Woodcraft. So honest to God, this is one of the nicest things and most thoughtful things someone has ever made for me. I also got something on my belt that I just got in the other day that is right up there too. We'll, we'll do another video on that. Um, but I, I, I've been sent things from people in the past, definitely, uh, quite a few things. And I always appreciate it. But something that is thoughtful, something that is, is made by hand, and in this case, a collaboration between three people, is, is pretty special to me. And this is going to stay in my rotation big time. Something that's made from people from the community, you know, I'm someone someone that who who says that he's been watching my videos for a long time. So I really appreciate that. I do have a couple other notes because the I, I don't want to leave the other guys hanging that was in the collaboration there. So, we've got the leather was Messer custom leather, okay? So he says and I'll put the Instagram or the the links where you can get these guys info. Uh, all in the description for sure. So check that out. Please go follow them like it's awesome stuff. Obviously I'm not being paid for any of this. This is not this is just good goodwill You know, I mean they, they this is them being awesome and sending me something really cool and me just promoting them and, and appreciating it and using using the stuff Joe, I hope this gift finds you well I'm a leather worker from Indiana and felt proud when Matt asked me to be a part of this project enjoy JC Messer at Messer custom leather and then the third one, what a neat collaboration to be a part of. I was happy to add a little extra touch by wood burning your logo onto the handle. We hope it will become a special piece in your collection. Nikki Bodger, I hope I don't mess up that last name too bad, Bodger, for Pete's sake's py py pyrography. 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 Fire. So I'll put up all, uh, all their ats in the, in the comment, or in the, in the description, sorry. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go use this thing because that's what it's all about, right? We checked it out on some, some spruce there earlier. Whoa. Okay. Wow, that's a laser. It's a freaking laser beam. Man. I don't hate that at all. Wow. And it did amazingly like a laser, like I was saying. Well, with the cue from the plane above. Let's stop talking about this thing and go put it to some use. I said stop talking about this thing. Go put it to some use. See how it works against some hardwood. But uh, just off the hop, the bend in the handle, where it, where it bends, the swell, the thinness of the handle are all things I always seek after in handles and it's really hard to find. So, man, him making this is like, and I didn't tell him nothing, nothing about it. He obviously knows about axes and knows what's good too. But anyways, let's go beat this up a bit. 
And this is going to be my new canoe tripping axe. I love it. Thanks a lot. Back to your old self or what? Let's go try to find some hardwood. It's cold, you know? There was leaks up already, and I think they're frosting over now. It's, it's freaking cold, man. There's something under there. Oh my god. Yeah man, this thing is so sharp. I could just push this over right now, but we're gonna just cut it on the back once. Okay. So we'll chop a piece off of this. We certainly don't need the whole thing. We'll bring some back. Man. Oh, look at that. This log is so old. It's just like, oh my goodness. Just peeling off layers. Of Tripper, calm down, homie. Funky too. Okay, this is the one. Nice and dry. She's the one. And just came apart at the bottom too. No, man. Come, let go of it. You stop. Holy crap. <laughs> All right. So we've got our piece. We collected, I don't know if it's the greatest. If it's not, we'll just use the piece that we have here uh, on the ground. Uh, that's from the, the hut, the fort, sorry. But Tripper mm -hmm. thinks that's his piece already. He's a handful today. Okay, so there's this lanyard uh, keychain on here. And it's nice, I'll put it on my keychain, but I'm not gonna leave it on the axe. We're gonna cut this off here. Like I said, we'll put it on our keychain. So the way I like to use an axe in the woods when I don't really have uh, like a long piece or whatever, I'll put my foot way down and I'll chop right on the apex of this other log and this one and just hold it in place with that one, but just as far away as I can. 
This thing is a laser. They said, okay, this might not be the greatest wood, man. I'm gonna try and split her down. It looks so nice on the outside, nice and dry. Man, he's right, this is an accurate axe, wow. Yeah, the grain on this is no good. There we go. <laughs> I gotta get something down there to collect these shavings. So making shavings with an axe is never gonna be as good as with your belt knife or pocket knife, whatever, but you can hear and see that it's working good. That's what I mean by it, you can hear it. And these will be fine enough to spark with a fire steel or obviously a lighter, whatever you have. It's really important to me to be able to shave with my axes. I shave I get usually most of my axes shaving sharp, but this one blows what I can do out of the water. I'll tell you that right now. I have no problem admitting that. This is a absolute razor. Have I said that yet? So it's important to me to be able to shave with them because this might be your only tool. You might never have a knife. You might have lose your knife or whatever the case may be. If you have your axe and it can shave, then you can skin fish with it, you can make some good firewood, fire prep with it, and whatever else you need to do. It's a great size, the 21 inch. I'm really liking it so far. Again, first try out. She's brand spanking new three hours ago. So spruce are notoriously bad for digging up blades right at their joints. So I'm taking a few of these spruce twigs off. Okay, we've got our shavings and first stage done. And we've got our fuel done. I just need a base. So I figure if I split this in half or chop this in half, I can use that as a base. It's formidable with one hand too. Like that's sometimes when you're using one hand, you can't get enough uh, oomph depending on how heavy the axe is. This is about perfect for one hand or two. Nice. Anyways, let's get this fire going. I hinted earlier, this is for our next another video, but custom mammoth ivory. Mammoth ivory made in the country of Georgia. Anyways, another another video for another day. But we're gonna use that to strike the fire steel because you can bet your butt I'm not using the blade of that axe to strike the fire steel with. So, you can use a lighter, obviously, or a rock, or a shell to light, to, to strike the uh, fire steel. Mm. 
And obviously this is hardwoods. You could be using birch bark, ferns, things that take a flame a touch easier than shavings. But shavings work, as you can see. That's fire, for sure fire. I'm gonna talk about no, this maybe nonsense. So again, punky wood. So not going the greatest, but not wet. Still some structural integrity. So in the middle somewhere, I believe it's maple. But anyway, still good, good test for everything. The fact of the matter is, I'm not gonna be sitting around using hard maple to start fires either. That, that's something you put on after if you have the access to it around here. Use cedar or twigs or birch bark, whatever the case may be. But this is old school, back to the southern Ontario roots. Only hardwood around, only thing around is hardwood. Ash, maple, oak, the hardest of the woods, ironwood. But anyways, you can see it works still. blow on this a touch. Not bad for a small axe with super, super dense wood. Like, I'm talking like the densest of the woods up here. Well, the edge held up great. I don't know if this is its intended purpose, trying to chop through big dense woods and stuff like that. This very well may have been a softer, like cedary type thing uh, head, but held up great. I love using it. It's the right size, the grain is on point. The handle's on point. Really, really good design, buddy. So again, I wanna huge give a huge shout out to the three people who put this together for me. I remember two of the names. Messer Leather. Beaver Creek Woodcraft. And pyro pyrography, something pyrography. I'm gonna get it. We're gonna, we're gonna get it. I promise. There we go. Old Joe, you know, things don't retain in there too good anymore. JC Messer, Messer Custom Weather. Messer. Mickey Boatger for Pete's sake's pyrography. And. Matt from Beaver Creek Woodcroft. Beaver Creek Woodcroft. So, you guys rock. Tripper, Tripper, you're throwing dirt on me, man. Take it down a notch. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is something different. I have big plans. I just have to be able to do them. So, uh, right now, Ontario has uh, no camping. So, we'll see how that goes but it should be lifted pretty soon. And uh, I have canoe trips planned. You know, it's right, I'm ready to go. I am ready to go. I, I guarantee you that. But anyways, I'll be able to use this on my canoe trips. 
and um, my new belt knife that I have on my on my belt. Again, I want to show you guys that, but it deserves its own video as well. And, and if I can't go camping, then uh, I'm gonna have to make some day daytime videos. And uh, I like these things. I got them pretty recently, and they're near and dear to my heart already for certain reasons. Um, they're made by people that have followed me for a long time, so. And they're awesome, very awesome tools, and uh, you cannot buy them because they're one of a kind. So that's all very important stuff to me. Okay, well, you guys have a great day. I hope things are going well in your part of the world. Who knows, right? Day to day. But uh, me and Tripper are still here doing our thing, digging holes and chopping wood. <laughs> you guys have a good day. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hear the crank? What are you doing, big guy?